Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom down in the dungeons of the, of the NHL hockey basement. That's why I have my lighting is terrible. But that's okay, because this is no frills, one take. I do this one take, no editing. We're here. You here to look at this face, or are you here to talk about trades? I have a trade, Proboroff. Okay, it isn't a trade, but it's a potential trade. Um, apparently, he's available, and I got an article that shows that that's that's possibly the case. He's frustrated. The Flyers are frustrated. A rebuild looks like it could be a deep rebuild in Philadelphia. Finally, if you ask Philadelphia Flyers fans, and you might want to go to Steel Flyers All Sports Network and ask all the fans in the land about it, and all the other sports and hawk in and uh, teams as well. Uh, they wanted this to happen already. They did apparently the fan fans. Now it appears that the powers of be they don't like that idea, and that's probably true. Their sponsors don't like it, and I'll get into that some other time. Watch the Steel Flyer show. I have an idea. I have a a theory as to how they went about doing what's going to come be a rebuild here but until but uh besides that go check it out i have a theory about it i might talk about it in this video but if Provorov is available there's going to be a lot of people interested the the defense market right now is not good and their return that's going to be the tough part the return here is going to be interesting um, I'm going to put it out there. I have a feeling I'm underselling him a bit. I think if they do put him out there, there may be a return that makes you go, oh my gosh, I can't believe they got that much. It's possible. So let's look at it. Let's look at Provorov. We're going to look at the article. And we're going to look at what Philadelphia Flyers might be looking for. And we're going to look at seven teams that he may go. All right. This is the article in question. Okay. This is from Broad Street, SB Nation, Broad Street. This is a great publication if you like Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, Flyers reportedly checking out the market for Ivan Provorov. Uh, the trade deadline is over seven weeks away. I just mentioned that. Uh, and, the, and the Philadelphia Flyers are doing just so poorly that they have a pile of players that could potentially be shipped off at the deadline. Thankfully, it seems the Flyers management, perhaps Chuck Fletcher himself, is realizing that the trigger needs to be pulled. I agree. One of the things that we have looked at the last, this is uh, Elliot Friedman. One of the things that we've looked at I've, that I've heard over the 20, 24 to 48 hours is that the Flyers, Elliot Friedman is an insider, big Sportsnet insider, are about to going to consider everything over the next 18 months. And they should. They're kind of in a situation where they need to do kind of a rebuild. Yes, I'm going to skip down here. One of the names that is new on the list is Yvonne Provorov. I think he's frustrated, and I think the Flyers are a little frustrated with the way that everything has gone down. Now I think there is an understanding here that it may, might be time. I think right now Philly is softly checking the market on him. I don't think there's anything imminent, but I do think they are checking the market on him to see where he is. Provorov has two years remaining on his contract, $6.7 million. That's going to come into play when we're talking about who, where he's going to go. He's only 25 years old. Um, it isn't overly expensive, like what, where it could be like $9 million. And he does have potential to be a top pairing guy. No matter your opinion on the player, NHL teams go absolutely bananas for any available to a defenseman at the deadline. Like, this is the thing. Ben Chirot got a first-round pick last year. I'll tell you, Ben Chirot is one of the most overrated NHL defensemen out there. Um, per, and Provorov is way better than him. Considering that Provorov would not be a rental, the trade might be a little more difficult to pull off, but the return should be substantial from any team wanting to solidify their blue line. All right, let's look at the Philadelphia Flyers. 
Philadelphia Flyers, now they are rebuilding. Um, of course, we all know the story, and maybe you don't. Tortorella being their coach has made it a little difficult for them to suck. I mean, they're not doing great, but they're not doing terrible. I'm not going to go check out where they are in the standings, but right now I think they're about ninth worst in the league. And most fans would like to see them like bottom of the league because we have the wonderful Bedard, you know, uh, lose hard for Bedard or whatever, tank hard for Bedard. I think his slogan, the guy's going to be an absolute beast. And uh, considering that we don't know when Couturier is going to be coming back from Philadelphia, a number one center would be huge. And centers may be in play when we're talking about each one of these teams that uh, Phil Roth might be traded to, just to give you a little heads up. If you are a Philadelphia Flyers fan right now, subscribe to my channel. Tell me what you think of all of this, if you should trade Provorov, what the return should be, all of that. I love commenting down there in the comment section with you guys. It's lots of fun. So, Provorov, left defenseman. Not right defenseman, might be better in a lot of cases when you're talking about a trade, but he's 26 years old. He is a fairly big dude. Like he's he's got he's got a powerful stride. Um, he has kind of regressed a little bit, but let's face it, it's been a bloody shit show in Philadelphia the last little while. Um, it's I don't think I really don't think too many general managers are going to take a, too much heed to the fact that he hasn't lived up to his expectations yet in Philadelphia because Philadelphia hasn't lived up to anything in the past couple of years. So how the heck is some this kid going to live up to it? He's only 26. He's still going into his prime years, and he's a wonderful skater. He has all the tools. He doesn't back down from anybody. Um, I mean, he's not a super punishing player, but he doesn't back down from anybody either. There's a lot to work with with Provorov, and I think a lot of teams are going to be very interested in having somebody like that. $6.7 million for the next couple years. He has some term. It is manageable. All right. Um, and, oh, also, I, had an, I couldn't find the article, but I also heard that Provorov himself at this point is, I think, kind of interested in moving on. He's, uh, Philadelphia hasn't gone anywhere. If they're going to go do an actual rebuild again, rebuild here, then he won't be in a playoff spot for years. I would not be doubt that behind the scenes he's like, if you're heading that direction, maybe I should head a different direction. I know I would if I were him, to tell you the honest truth. I would have been out of there a long time ago. I would have said that already. Okay, the first team we're going to look at, the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, when it comes to defensemen, Winnipeg Jets always come up. Now, I know the Winnipeg is doing really well this year. They're playing some better D. No doubt about that. But on paper, this defense is still not that great. Um, although Joshua Morrissey is putting up good offense this year, um, his defense is still way overrated. He's, they, some, I heard somebody say he, he used to be a defensive defenseman. When? He was never a defensive defenseman. DeMello is a defensive defenseman. Brendan Dillon is a fairly average defensive defenseman. He's not bad. He's pretty good. And Neil Pionk, I still think, is their best defenseman. But if you can get a young 26-year-old guy that can play in, J in Brendan Dillon's spot and have him be able to play down in the bottom there, uh, where Dillon Sandberg is right now, now you say, well, we like Dylan Sandberg. I'm sure you do, but he doesn't have the upside of Provorov. I like him too. I just don't think he's that great, which leads me to say this. Dylan Sandberg's probably part of this deal. Okay. The other thing is Winnipeg is in not only in a playoff spot, they're starting to make a case where they could make a push in the playoffs. And this is a team that hasn't did so in a long time. Doesn't have a huge market, and I'm sure wants to get as much playoff rounds as they possibly can. I'm sure they're thinking about Cup. Who knows? You got Connor Hollebuck there. Um, the team is fairly solid. I don't know if I would call them a Cup contender contender, but you never know when you get to the playoffs, right? And teams like Winnipeg, small market teams like this, they got to go for it when they get there. So um. They do have cap issues, if I remember correctly, like every team does. 
there's probably going to have to be some players going back in this deal to make it work. Um, Philadelphia would love to just get him, get move him, and not have to get cap space back. But he's making six some million, and then at the moment they uh, the Jets only have three and a half million cap space. So something would have to give in that area. That's kind of why I have Winnipeg here as the first team, as not the most likely team, because you can help me out, Winnipeg Jets fans. Subscribe to my channel. Tell me. Which player you would consider? I know you're going to say Blake Wheeler, but that ain't happening. They're not taking Blake Wheeler back at $8 million. There's no way. Um, I think Dylan Sandberg, it may have to be the very Brendan Dylan that we're talking about. I do not believe he has a no-trade clause. No, he doesn't have a no-trade clause. I think it would have to be Brendan Dylan. Um, and I like Brendan Dillon. He's not a bad defensive defenseman. When you're talking about Provorov, he's way better. He had way better offensively, has much more upside. He's 26 years old. His two-way game, I think, would flourish uh, in uh, on a team like Winnipeg. And I don't know if he would be happy to go to Winnipeg. There's a lot of stuff that has to go with an agent. But if you did give him up, Brandon Dillon, there would have to be more to it than that, for sure. I mean, people are going to be clamoring all over the place for this guy. You may want to consider your 2023 first, which if we look at that. 2023 first, you have a 2023 first. It's late. Um, the Winnipeg has drafted a, so, uh, several young players in the next little while. They might be able to live with that. It's hard to bite and give up that 2023 first in what's supposed to be an amazing draft. But I think you might have to give them up, give it up, and I think you, you might even have to have give up more than that. Defensemen at the deadline are so sought after that the prices just go crazy. So you have to tell me, Winnipeg fans, do you even want to go farther than that? Like a guy like Chaz Lucius. Now, I bet you, I, I wonder if people are out there going, I wonder what you're going to say. Chaz Lucius, your 2000, say you can get away with your 2024 first. Chaz Lucius, they need centermen in Philadelphia really bad. And Brendan Dillon. I don't even know if that'll do it. But let's say, let's give that, let's start there and see, see how many no's we get. Out there from Winnipeg fans. Sub up to the channel. Let me know what you think, Winnipeg fans, about getting Prover off for a package like that. I really think it'll have to be the 2023 first. I'm just going to say that. So that's two firsts and Brendan Dillon. There you go. San Jose Sharks. And I think the San Jose Sharks are going to be on anybody who's young in the age group of Prover off. I really don't think they want to go deep, deep rebuild here, although they may. It's hard to say. It depends on what Timu Meyer they do with Timu Meyer. It doesn't sound like they're going to be able to sign Timu Meyer. And I did a Timu Meyer trade video. You might want to check that out. I don't think I had Philadelphia. But I think it's possible that that could be the very thing that happens here. Timu Meyer can play both right and left wing. Philadelphia... Doesn't would rather have a center in this spot, but I think when you're getting somebody like Timu Meyer, especially considering the fact that James Van Riemsdyk is probably not going to be re-signed next year. In fact, he'll probably they'll want to use they'll probably want to use him for a trade as well, maybe as well. So you would have your top line left winger to play with. Hopefully, cross your fingers, Couturier comes back, and you've got. Meyer, Couturier, and Owen Tippett, you're starting to look like you got a lineup here. And in that situation, you're not doing a complete rebuild, but you're getting another 26-year-old huge offensive threat. Um, that's a possibility that they would go that direction. I think that would only really happen if... Uh, if Philadelphia, like if this is basically Provorov saying he wanted out and they're trying to get the best deal that they possibly can get. As it stands, I think it would be more like Mario Ferrero 
the left defenseman there to make the cap kind of work a little bit. And then it's going to be first round picks, 2024. No way as a San Jose Shark fan, I'm giving up. No fan, no way I'm, they're giving up their 2023. Not a chance. You're not getting it. No way. So 2024, maybe. If they're doing a real, real, real rebuild in Philadelphia, that should interest them. Maybe protected, top three protected or something like that. And you would get an actual top line left winger or left defenseman to go with Eric Carlson, who doesn't look like he can be traded. And I just have this sneaky feeling the San Jose is going to try to quick rebuild there as much as they possibly can. Because they're not in a market that really can support a deep, deep rebuild. And that would be a 26 year old dude. Uh, Team of Meyer can be used for some other trade as well. And, but I mean, the 2024. Are you going to have to give up more than that? I'll tell you, defensemen like this at the deadline, it's possible. Mario Ferrero and the 2024 and maybe even another prospect out there. Maybe not a top-end prospect, but Ryan Merkley wants out. Why not Ryan Merkley? Ryan Merkley, the 2024 top 10 protected, and Mario Ferrero. Philadelphia gets another defenseman in their pool, and they get and you and San Jose gets a top pairing young defenseman right now. So that just work towards not have to do an absolute burn down rebuild in a market that can't really support it. San Jose Sharks fans, let me know what you think about that. Sub subscribe to my channel, comment in the comment section, and let me know. All right, Edmonton. Oilers. You can't talk about defensemen and not talk about the Edmonton Oilers. They're going to be out looking for a defenseman. They have to be. This, I mean, go over and over this. They don't really even have a top pairing defenseman right now. Darnell Nurse is supposed to be, but he's not playing like it. That's for sure. Cody Cece certainly isn't. Brett Kulak, no. Tyson Berry, no. Broberg, maybe eventually. But I guess the biggest problem here is they would... No, it's a left defenseman. He's a left defenseman. Something that they need. And, of course, there's going to have to be money going back. I think Brett Kulak, Kulak would have to go back here. And that's not a huge offer back. So there's going to be a lot more going back than Kulak. I'm trying to keep Broberg without giving up Broberg here. I'm trying to do that. 2023 first would be a 4 Sure, in this deal. Jesse Puglia Harvey. I love Jesse Puglia Harvey. I don't know how much of an analytics team they have in Philadelphia, but if they're looking at that, the analytics of that guy with the two way game for Tortorella's system, I think they could get, well, it would end up being a steal. I'm positive. Jesse Puglia Harvey, if he went to Philadelphia and played for Tortorella, this guy would start putting up 50 to 60 points and playing some of the best two-way hockey in the NHL. So, Jesse, the perceived value of Puglia Harvey is low, but the actual is actually very high. Jesse Puglia Harvey, 2023 first. Brett Kulak to make the money work, and it would probably even have to be another prospect like Carter Savoy or um, Xavier Bourgeau. Like, the package is going to be big. And if Edmonton doesn't want to do that, I don't know, just go with this defense in the playoffs this year. And you're not going to win anything with that. And Edmondson, I heard there's rumors that they're looking at guys like Edmondson. Like, that's not going to help. He's not even, he's not better than what you already have. That Kulak is better than Edmondson. And maybe Gavrikov was an interesting way. But I think this defense needs more help than that. And I think Provorov could be somebody that would be very, very, very good. Play He could play in the top line, top pairing with CC or with uh, Barry. He could play with Barry, strong defensive player, play with Barry. And then keep Nurse and CC, I guess. I don't know. You're still not that great. But you kept Broberg. And you gave up a pretty big other package. I don't know if Philadelphia would be into that. Tell me what you think if you're a Philadelphia Flyers fan in that deal. And Oilers fans, would you be all over that or not? All right. 
subscribe to my channel and let me know. The Los Angeles Kings. I think they would be the first ones on the phone here, to tell you the honest truth. I think they would be the first ones on the phone. I've heard it over and over and over again that they're looking to upgrade this D. There has been talk not lately that they said that, no, we're happy with their team. We're not going to look elsewhere. We have no cap space. When you hear a team saying stuff like that, they're more or less just trying to to uh, ne not let anybody know that there's any desperation at all. We're fine, whatever. So when they're talking in trade talks, there isn't some perceived uh, leverage issue. But I still think they'd want a big guy like Provorov. Um, they have too many right defensemen. Dowdy, Matt Roy, uh, Walker. Jersey's supposed to be a right defenseman. He plays lefty. He doesn't play it bad, but I think he's better on right. And Jordan Spence coming up as a right defenseman. And then uh, Helge Grimes. I'm missing somebody. I'm missing somebody here. Brant Clark. Another right defenseman. They got tons. Tons of right defensemen. So really, does it really need a right defenseman? But with all the ones you have, and I know you're going to hate this because I know everybody loves their Matt Clark or their Brant Clark, but there's so many here, I think you'd have to give them up in this deal. Brant Clark might do it. He's, that, he's extremely talented. I know he is, but he's not going to be ready for a while. And I think LA is ready to go right now, man. You want to wait around? Throw Dursey on the right side with Provorov, and you've got Anderson, Doughty, and uh, Matt Roy goes down in the set, in the next pairing with Edler, and you're well on your way to having an amazing top four. Yes, Brent Clark is probably going to be good somewhere down the road. Uh, I know he's going to be good somewhere down the road. His numbers are absolutely fantastic. I would even go, I mean... The thing here is L.A. doesn't have the cap space, I'm sure, to support that. Another player would have to go back. A, a, uh, a roster player would probably have to go back in this deal. I'm going to take a look here real quick. How much cap space they have. $4 million. Not bad. 6.5. So you got to make up $2.5 million somehow. Comment in the comment section and tell me know what you get about, would give up. I think most people would say Michael Anderson. Um, he's going to need a contract in 2023. Might be tough to sign. Maybe you can get away with that. But if you go Anderson, you're going to have to give up somebody like Velarde or something like that as well. I'm telling you, it's going to be expensive. If you give up Brad Clark, though, you might not have to give up that much more on top of that. Maybe Rasmus Kupari. Rasmus Kupari and Brad Clark. And you keep your first round pick. Maybe your 2024 protected. If it gets, there's going to be a bidding war going on for this guy. So you could be looking at a package that's like Kapari, Clark, protected first. I'm telling you, man, when it comes to deadline, the price goes up and up and up. I have a feeling most of the LA King fans I talk to, they don't like doing deals like that. We want to keep our guys. We want to keep our guys. I don't know. I'm not like that. I want to win. I want to win the cup. I think they got a team in the next two, three years that could. And, I, and, and I'm not sure Brant Clark's going to be as good as Provorov in that time. And Provorov is as good as Provorov right now. Comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about the Kings fans, Vancouver Canucks. And you can't talk about defensemen without talking about the Vancouver Canucks. If, they're, if there's one available, they're going to be in there like a dirty shirt. I know they want... Um, they probably want a right D, but it's not likely going to get it. They have virtually no – I have Vancouver high here because they really need, 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 and everybody knows it. So their leverage is not very good, and I think you could extract the most value out of this – out of uh, Vancouver, um, especially if Philadelphia were to take a player like Tyler Myers back who just has fallen off a cliff. Maybe Tortorella can get something out of that guy. I don't know. 
But that would make the money work right away. Six million for Myers. But guess what? He's not even, you might as well not even assent to anything in the deal. Because Philadelphia doesn't need to do that deal. So now you're going to basically make a trade for the value of Provorov on top of Myers. And it's going to have to be something that doesn't put a lot of money back. It's going to be prospects and picks, pretty much. So you're going to be looking, Pud Colson is not doing well in the minors this year. Um, I think you could throw in by Vasily Pod Colson in there. And uh, everybody loves their prospects. What? They think that Pod Colson is going to be the greatest thing in the world or whatever the case may be. Uh, he could be good. He's not progressing very well. And you need defense and you're going to have to give stuff up. Simple as that. You're going to have to give up a first round pick in 2024. And you might be able to hold, you're going to hold on to the 20, 2023. There's no way we're giving that up. But 2024 first, put Coles in and Myers. And guess what? You might even have to do more than that. 26 year old left defenseman that can skate, um, can play D, can have offense, that has plenty of upside and are big. Do not come on the market very much anymore. The market for defensemen out there is virtually nada. There's Chikrin, Gavrikov, and possibly Provorov here. And that's about it. So it, all of this, what I'm saying, the actual trade that could happen here, you're going to be like, holy crap, what a haul. It's going to be a lot. I imagine there would even be more than that involved in the deal. Tell you the honest truth. Tell me if you would even just do that, Vancouver fans. Just do that for Provorov. All right, next. Anaheim Ducks. And just, they have no defense at all, Anaheim. They don't have really much coming up in the, like, they have virtually nobody coming up in the pipeline either, except for, like, 19 year olds. Mintuka. Mintyukov and Zellweger are probably going to be very good, but they're a couple years away for sure. And they are left defensemen. So, you know, you can wait that long. If they're going to go deep, deep rebuild here, maybe you don't do the steal, but Fowler can play right D. And he plays it well. You can have Provorov with Fowler, give the guy a break and have him have an actual player with him. Kulikov's not bad. I shouldn't say that. Good defensive guy. But he's not really a top pairing. So you have a top pairing defenseman. So when those other guys come up, and one of them makes it or both of them make it or whatever, now you're looking like you have a decent D. And you get to start sooner. It helps this rebuild kind of progress a little faster. Because I don't think Anaheim is going to want to be doing a 10-year rebuild here. I really don't. Um, and they've draft very, very well. So I have a feeling that it's going to, uh, I have a feeling it's going to be a quicker rebuild than people think. Philadelphia, I haven't even mentioned it when doing all of these because nobody's really had a center to give. Isaac Lindstrom could very well be. I'll go back to Vancouver, maybe Horvat. Forgot about that, Horvat. Somebody will probably mention it in Vancouver. Uh, Isaac Lindstrom is somebody I really love. And if I'm Philadelphia, this is what I want him part of this deal. 2024 first, we'll go protected. I mean, there's no way you can go unprotected in that. 2024 first, Isaac Lindstrom, and maybe Euro Vakaninen or something like that. That 2020 top three protected or something like that. And you get, if you get a Provorov in, that, in the 2024 draft, if you get a defenseman as good as Provorov, you'll be very happy, right? Um, and Lindstrom is, is hard to give up. It's, it is, uh, it's hard to bite on, but you, you do have Zegris, Mason McTavish, Strom will play the wing eventually. They just got him there. So Lindstrom is kind of buried in there and you're going to be drafting a lot more players that can take Lindstrom's spot. I love Lindstrom. If you're listening and you're a Philadelphia Flyer fan and you're saying who, the guy is a, uh, one of the most underrated two-way centers in the league. He's just buried in Anaheim. Philadelphia, I mean, Tortorella would love this guy. 
absolutely love this guy. And he has really good upside. He's been injured most of the year. I know you see his point total and you go, six points in 21 games. But, I mean, this is really a down year for him. He's probably, he probably has been playing hurt. But he had 29 points in 80 games last year as a 23-year-old. If he played higher in the lineup, he'd probably be a 50-point guy. And great two-way, great everything. Plus, you get the 2024 first. That's a big thing. If you're going to rebuild, you need those. Um, one thing, did Anaheim have – does Anaheim have Florida's pick, if I remember correctly? Let's take a look at that. No, they have lots of second-round picks in 2023. They could maybe throw a second-round pick in 2023. You'd have to love, love, love Proberoff. But I'm telling you, there's going to be GMs out there that love, love, love Proberoff, and they're going to give a crap load for him. Finally, the Florida Panthers. I think they will love, love, love Proberoff. It just feels to me... Like, this would be the spot. The only thing is it's interdivision, which makes it tough. But I think they'd be on the phone hardcore here. Um, this is a team that doesn't want to rebuild. They went and they grabbed Matthew Kachuk. They lost Mackenzie Weger. They knew they were going to struggle defensively this year. But they wanted to change the culture of their team. That's why they brought in Mark Stahl, who really is more for the room because he doesn't play really all that great anymore. Um, but he's a warrior. He brought both. They brought both of the Stahl brothers in, actually. And they're both warriors. And they got Kachuk, who's a warrior. You see what I'm saying here? They're trying to teach this team how to be warriors. And they're not rebuilding. They're going to rebuild their defense, yes. But it's going to be fast, I believe. And they want to do it now. So... Problem here is you're not getting a first-round pick. They have no more first-round picks. Picks are out of the question when it comes to Florida. So you got to be looking at forwards back. And they need cap space, so it's going to have to be a forward back. And I believe that forward back to start off with would be Sam Reinhardt. He's, he's uh, uh, going to be a UFA in 2024, so he's going to need a deal They'd have to talk to his agent about the idea of moving, going to Philadelphia. But the thing is, Philadelphia Flyers fans are, we don't need wingers. We got this. He doesn't have to be a winger. I don't even know why they don't have it here. Sam Reinhardt, when he was in Buffalo, and they played him up the middle as a centerman, he was freaking awesome. I don't know why they don't use him up the middle more in Florida. But when he did it in Buffalo, he was really good. So I would take Sam Reinhardt, put him in the middle as a centerman for Philadelphia, and maybe a guy like Josh Mahura. You're not going to get a first-round pick, so you're going to have to get prospects too. There's, they're not screaming. They're not flowing with prospects in Florida, though. That's the problem. So Sam Reinhardt. Josh Mahara and whatever prospects you can find to throw their way because they need left defensemen right now. Right now. They don't need it yesterday. They don't need it tomorrow. They need it right now. Where is... Oh, Gregory De Denisenko. Gregory Denisenko. Big... Or, uh, he's He's been struggling in the minors. He's been struggling with his... Uh, development what do you have like he's got 18 points in 31 games you want to see more than that from a guy who was drafted as high as he was but throw him out there see if it'll stick hopefully they really love Reinhardt uh, in this deal because he's only 27 years old if Philadelphia is trying to do like a fast rebuild they might be interested in something like that uh, Denisenko like I said and whatever else you can find in the cupboard to throw their way. Florida fans, would you be interested in something like that? I think you might be a little light, Florida fans, in what you're going to need to give up now that I'm doing this video. I do all of these, one take, no editing, no nothing. So uh, 
I just like to have fun and do them. All right, that's my full 42, boys and girls. It's all I have to give today. Subscribe to the channel. I'm going to do tons of these. Tons. I had fun doing this. I hope you had fun as well. Catch you next time. Um, there is a lot of people, rumored people coming up and players coming out right now. I'm hearing lots of it. So I'll be doing a lot more of this. Check out my Laugh in the Air one too. That one has bring a lot of buzz in the in the land. I'll tell you that right now. Have a great day, everybody. Talk to you next time. Okay.